fun today. You know, pads on the first time. Uh, I thought they were spirited. Probably wore down a little bit at the end, you know, but uh, it's good. It's a good first day in pads. We'll come back out here Monday in pads. Uh, the thing that's interesting for me, I think, and probably the players and they don't even notice is, you know, I'm so used to having Brett as a quarterback and the rhythm of practice that he plays with, just getting used to these other guys. And I think we'll settle in and, and practice is a little bit more crisp, but I think for the third day, it's we're right where we want to be. So just got to keep getting better. There was some insulation today, was there? Is that what Taylor said in that? Yeah. That, he said, kind of confused a lot of people or just... Yeah, we added, you know, we worked a lot of red zone today. And so, uh, it was a new installation and it just formations and the verbiage and it just slows things down a little bit. It was, a, I mean, it was, I've had a million people comment on how fast practice was and I, I mean, we need to come out again later to see a fast practice, but it was good. We're making progress. So. You expect the team to lean more on Paul this year just because you're using a new quarterback? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, we like to be balanced, you know, I mean, we, we have to run it, be able to run it. And, you know, there's times you got to sling it and be able to sling it. But it's what is nice is to have a veteran offensive line and a you know the Pac-12 leading rusher returning. You know, and then some really good ones behind him and good ones coming in. So we should be able to run the ball. And I think anytime you can run the ball, it does take some pressure off your quarterback. Do you see Nate as kind of the clear number two behind Paul at this point? Um. Yeah, but there's still great competition there. You know, I, I mean, I think the first three practices that uh, Craig Lee's flashed, you know, and you know Stephen Manfro will be back in the fall full speed, and, you know, he's a competitor. So, and then when Soso and Boldu come in, and then Rosie, you know, he fights his little butt off in there. So it's a really complete back, a group of backs. It's a good group of backs. Would you say for Craig Lee, the lights starting to come on a little? He's starting to get his assignments more? I think so, and then, you know, he's so fast and explosive and he has quickness, so once he really understands what to do, he can play with certainty, and when you play with certainty, you play with more speed, and then your natural ability shows. So, you know, I think it's important that we find a role for him because he, he has true speed. And, uh, you know, everyone comes along at a different pace. You know, everyone figures it out at a different pace, and I just feel like, like you said, the light's coming on for him. It's really, you notice it. He's playing faster. He's going downhill more often. It's, it's good to see. Is it's it a little tough for him just trying to work through all that? Well, I think, like I said, it's different for everybody, you know? Um, just the transition. When you talk about, you know, school and the social and the football, you know, some are able to just adapt more quickly than others. But the great thing about, about Craig is that even though it hasn't worked out to this point exactly like he wanted it to, he's always had a great attitude. He's always hung in there. He's always worked incredibly hard. And then eventually you hope that it pays off and it looks like it's going to start paying off for him. How's you know, Simon's legs and stuff you know, at this point? He looks good to me. He's got bounce back. You know, he. Uh, I noticed it today at one point, right after there, we did the pat and go, and he had to run from that end zone down here to do the O line work. And as he was running away from me, I was standing with, I can't remember who I said, I haven't seen Simon run like that since he was a freshman. You know, just bouncing and not, you know, I used to kind of drag his leg and his knees were pointed in. He looked, he looked good. So I just hope he continues to get better. Seems like Ken Lacey has flashed a little at offensive line. What yeah, have you seen from him though? I think settling into guard, you know, he's playing left guard. And we've had to move him around a lot. You know, he was kind of the jack of all trades guy. And, and in three practices now, he's been firmly established at left guard. I think he's got confidence. You know, and he knows what he's doing. And I think the work he's done in the weight room with Coach Alosi has paid off. And uh, he's got a long ways to go still. But uh, the one thing we have now, finally, is we have real depth on the offensive line. You know, we have, I mean, real depth, not just a guy or two, but we've got. When you get when you get Quiz back and Caleb will be back next week, and then all of a sudden your offensive line starts to look pretty healthy. How does that change what you can do in spring when you have so much depth on the OL? You know, in the past we've had to alter a lot of our practices. You know, we've had to cut reps out. Uh, we've had to slow down. Uh, and right now we've got enough guys that can play at a high level. We can practice where we want to practice. You know, it's hard when you have to cut back on reps because of one group. You know, especially when you're trying to develop your quarterbacks, you know, and that, that chemistry between your quarterbacks and receivers. So it just helps us as a team, and it helps defensively, the competition. You know, 
going against good players makes you a better player. How do you think the focus, focusing on like quarterbacks today, how do you think that's working? You mean like kind of two a day? Yeah. Well, I think, think it's good, and that's why we're doing it. It was Taylor's idea, but uh, you know, I think what happens is if you try to work four or five guys through a practice and get them equal reps, it gets watered down, you know, and they can't get into a flow. And so when you take two guys and you ice, and we're only, you know, we're going to do this for a few practices and we'll reevaluate it, but when you give them a concentrated number of repetitions, then they can get in a little rhythm and, and, you know, they can play through some mistakes that are going to happen in practice. And it's not like, you know, you get 10 plays and three bad ones and you feel bad about practice, you get 40 or 45 plays and maybe you still have, you know, a couple bad plays, but there's a, there's a, a positiveness to what we're doing. So I, I like it. Is it easier to evaluate? I mean, Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Because you see more work on that day, more concentrated work. How Scott White adjusted to being the linebackers coach now? Oh, great. I mean, it's been seamless. And he's doing a heck of a job on special teams, too. Very organized. He's very detailed. He's got great energy and passion. The players really respond to him. He's an excellent communicator. You, know, you, you guys don't see him in the meeting room, but when he stands up in front of the team, because he does stand in front of the team as a special teams coach, he just has really great command. And, uh, and guys tune into him. And he's. Uh, the most important thing when you stand in front of a room of players is that you have credibility, you know, and you can lose it fast. And Scotty has credibility with our players. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks, everybody.